Hey YouTube, uh, John here again. I shot a video recently uh, on an unboxing and I used three different cameras to uh, video. They all shot at the same time and I thought it'd be pretty simple to edit them together in Premiere Elements 2020. Turns out it's not. There's no way to do multi-cam editing in Premiere Elements. So I'd, I used three different cameras. I had my Canon 70D, which would be my A camera. Then I had a GoPro uh, Hero 7 Black, which was my, I guess, my B cam. And then I used an iPhone XS or 10S as the overhead cam. As you can see them all here. Uh, first thing we'll do is uh, right click and make that iPhone point the right way. I put all of these out at the same time. When you import, it's very important to have the audio brought in. And the reason for that is audio makes it much, much simpler to synchronize your tracks. You can see using these little waveforms here, and it's much, much easier to align these wave points, whoops, than it is to do it with video. But we'll get to that in a minute. What I did was I took, for instance, the iPhone audio uh, video. First, I'll rename it so that we know what it is. And then I kind of shrunk it some and moved it up here, just up into the corner. Then I took the GoPro video, renamed it to GoPro, and then I shrunk that down as well. Last, I took the video from the Canon, renamed it, minimized that some, and drug it here. What's important to do is figure out which one will be your primary. Whichever one you think will have the most footage on the uh, final cut, you should probably make that your bottom track because this way you'll never have to cut away from that one. And, and the way I do this is this one will always run and always be visible. Instead of using the fade in and out, the cross dissolves and, and cutting these things, we'll put keyframes in and we'll adjust the visibility of each particular clip. But we'll get to that in a minute. So then what I like to do is I like to add text. And this is just for me. This uh, has nothing to do with the actual video. This just helps me keep track while I'm watching it. So first thing we'll do is we'll do GoPro. We'll stretch this out to be the entire length of the project. And then we'll move this up to where, up here. All we're doing here is labeling our screen. So then I'll do that again for the next one. And again, we'll stretch this out for the entire size of our project. And then we'll move this down here. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna get our videos synchronized. Now, the way I did it, since it's just me doing this, there's no, no one operating the cameras, I actually had to walk around and start each camera manually. You can see as we watch, there's my butt. Yeah, still my butt. So they don't all start at the same time, even though on the timeline down here, they all start at the same time. So the first thing we need to do is to correct that. Now, what we can do is you need something to synchronize the audio and the video. And just because, you know, I want to pretend like I'm a, a pro, I went out and bought one of these slates, a clacker. And I use it for what uh, the professionals use it for, which is to kind of synchronize your audio and your video. We'll concentrate on the Canon track. Scoot these back. Because the Canon is sort of my master track. So we'll find in here and we'll watch right there. So we can see if we zoom in, this is where the Canon uh, recorded the clack. 
And then we just take our other videos and we look for the similar waves. Now, I believe that's this here. So we'll grab him and scoot him out some. This is the GoPro. So if we look, that essentially synchronizes up. And then we'll do the same with the iPhone. Now, for some reason, the iPhone doesn't quite sync up. The track doesn't quite sync up. It's either a little bit early or a little bit late. So we'll go with a little bit late. So you can see here, they all clack, uh, they all line up, as does the audio track down here. So then if you watch it, you can see that they all add up. Line up, excuse me. So at that point, you can probably cut all that video in the beginning to get rid of it. The next thing I like to do is, I know some people will actually want to cut here and remove tracks, and that's fine. If that, that's how you like to do it, that's cool. I prefer a more non-destructive way. I will actually get a piece of paper and write down where I want the camera changes to happen. So as I'm watching through this, and I, I, you know, I'm watching, you know, primarily on Canon on my A camera. I go through it, and maybe right here I want to switch to the GoPro. So what I would do is I would figure out uh, right here at 5206. I'll jot down on my notepad 5206 GoPro, and I'll just cut to the GoPro. And then as I watch it, I'll say, okay, I want the GoPro to go back to the Canon at 58.25. So I would write in my notebook, 58.25 Canon. And as, as we go throughout this, you know, we zoom up, up right here. You know, for instance, the first time you open the box, you know, the whole point of an unboxing video is to see what's in the box. I would then cut to the iPhone right here. And then once we've got that in place, again, at some point, maybe we cut back to the Canon or we cut to the GoPro just to see what, you know, just to kind of get different angles, make the video more interesting than, than just one straight cut from in front, for instance. And these go up and down constantly, up, down, on, off. So once we've gone through and uh, figured out where we, we want all of our cuts to be, we start back at the beginning of the video. Now, generally the beginning of the video, we're gonna start with our A camera because, you know, I'm talking to the camera. So what I would do is I would put in a keyframe on the iPhone track and on the GoPro track. Then I would go to the end and I would put on a keyframe there and then I would put on a keyframe at the end of the GoPro video. And what this does is it allows us to make these essentially invisible. Now we just have our A camera. And then as we go through it, again, I'm just gonna randomly pick something. I would see in my notebook that at this moment I wanted to cut to my GoPro. So I would go to the GoPro, put a keyframe in, then I would put, I would move the head one frame forward, put another frame in, and then I would go to where I wrote down that I want to cut back to the A camera. So I would put a marker in there and then another keyframe in there. Now I, so you have two together. And the whole point of this is I don't want it to gradually fade from zero to a hundred here, because otherwise it would it would start showing you know gradually until it got to hundred percent, and then over here same thing it would gradually fade out till it got to the next marker. By doing this way, we can go from zero to a hundred in one frame, so it would look similar to this. And remember, once we're not doing the three videos in one frame, it would cut in better. So then you'd go about this process. And then uh, just as one more example, let's say we wanted to go to the iPhone, the top down shot here, we would create a keyframe, go one 
frame forward, drop another one, scoot to where we want the iPhone to drop back out again, put a keyframe, one more keyframe. Again, this otherwise we would fade and we don't want to fade, we want to cut. And now we would do this. And remember, the cannon is always on. It just makes it easier that way. Now the iPhone comes into play. And now the iPhone drops back out. And remember, in our final video, everything will be full screen and we won't need to do this anymore. Once you've got it all synced up, then you can start doing your color correcting, audio correcting, you know, whatever you need. And you can get to your final video. So now you can see that I have taken the three windows that were once uh, shrunken, I guess. Is that a word? I don't know, now it is. And I've made them all full frame again. As we play through this, as you can see, right now, the Canon, the A camera, is at 100% visibility, while the GoPro is at zero and the iPhone is at zero. As we zoom through this, you will see that right here, we're going to do a quick cut right over to the GoPro. And then in a couple of seconds, it's gonna drop back to the Canon. And then a few seconds after that, it's gonna cut up to the iPhone. Unboxing of the Vitesse, Vitesse, 55 inch gaming desk that we got off Amazon. Canon. And open this thing up. iPhone. And then put it together. And then as we go through this, for instance, if we wanted to put a, oh, let's put another one here. We want to look at the iPhone again. Can we do a keyframe, move it one step forward, do another keyframe, and then we figure out down here, we're gonna put a keyframe in and another keyframe. And then we drag this up to 100%. So it's pretty heavy. It applies here. Look, Canon, iPhone. It is a 55 inch desk. And, and then the back box. to the Canon. Definitely not. And that's pretty much it. You could still cut each clip and do fades and, and you know use the tools that are built into Premiere. I happen to like working this way, I find it easier. Plus, without cutting the clips, if I have to apply an effect, I can do it to the whole clip right here. I don't have to do it to a bunch of individual clips that I've cut. If you do like working uh, by cutting the clips, you may want to try to put effects in ahead of time before you start snipping away at that clip so that they're in there as one channel, then you cut it, uh, the effects should follow that. What you see here is the actual final cut, edit, you know, timeline of that actual unboxing video. Now here, I did make the iPhone the bottom one. Uh, later on, I realized I probably should have used the Canon, but whatever, um, no, no issues. And you can see what all my cuts look like. Every time you see one up, in this case, the Canon is showing. When you see one of these up, the GoPro is showing. Now, I don't have to drop the GoPro if the Canon's up. I happen to do it just because, I don't know, OCD, who knows. Uh, but while the Canon was up, I did pull down the GoPro, but that's not necessary. And as you can see, you can see how the cuts work. I like to do the, just the abrupt cuts, just like that. This is the charging station installation. The kit. Brackets. This is how I chose to do it. Now you'll, you will see right over here that I actually cut the clips. And the whole reason for that is there's a sequence in there where I'm trying to get this out of the box and I wanted to speed it up, kind of, you know, Keystone Cop sort of thing. So I did have to cut that out simply to do that a little bit different, as you can see here. So there the we go. Is another box. And then, of course, there's always other things that you can put in, like I put my opening animation in, and at the top I put my little logo here across the entire clip. And then we work in pictures like the actual thing from Amazon and down here I put a little bit of you know put my metal fingers in 
this is how I do a multicam video. It comes out pretty good. You know, you render it, you make sure it all looks good, you color correct it, etc. And then you output it, upload it to YouTube. Thank you for watching. If you had any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, if you have any comments, of course, put them in the comments below. Please click the subscribe button, the like if you liked it. I'd really like to hear from you on what you thought of this, if it was helpful, and if you have any uh, ideas that I could work on for you in the future. Thank you so much. Bye.